Hey, this squad, welcome back to the of Is It Worth It? So today's episode, we got this cool thing here. And this is what this is, is a portable power station. For the one that we got right here, the brand called EcoFlow. And this is the River 2 Max. So if you guys seen my previous video, I actually reviewed like the Delta, Delta 2, Delta uh, Max, and also like the River Flow uh, series. I show you guys like the River 2, River 2 Pro, and some other ones available as well. This time I do have the River 2 Max, so I'm actually open up and show you guys what the inside looks like. I'm gonna put this down on the ground and take it out because it's very heavy inside. But once you guys open up, first the inside right here, we do have the protection layer. If you guys do take this part out, right underneath that, they do probably guys a user manual to teach you guys how to set it up and how to use it. And then right underneath that, we do have the product. So if I do take it out, here we do have the product. But underneath that, they do have a box. And inside this box right here, should be the cable that you guys want to use to recharge it. So if I do take it out, they do probably guys want a DC, DC cable for you guys to use. They do probably guys for the car charging options and use. And here we do have the AC cable for you guys to use. So just like any other of the EcoFlow product, when you guys do use the cable to plug it in directly to recharge it, it will help you guys recharge the power station within one hour. So really fast charging speed in terms of what you guys do get compared to many other products that I showed you guys before. And that's everything inside here. So now let's take a look at the actual product. So I can see the way how to design this one is very similar to like the River 2 or the River 2 Pro. But there's some stuff that you guys get on here that the River 2 does not have and some stuff that you don't have on here that the River 2 Pro has. So what you guys do get is two of the AC option that has three prong option, two of the two prong option here. You do have the USB option, there's three of them, and then one USB-C option that provides you guys up to 100 watt speed when you use them. I wish they gave you guys more of the USB-C option because more devices now use USB-C, but it's fine that they don't have that. Right here, we do have the DC option for you guys to use for the car socket, and we do have the DC option here. Notice how the AC option and DC option, there's a button for you guys to press to activate the product. And then here, we do have the button for you guys to activate it. So once you guys do turn it on, this is what the screen looks like. So currently I show you guys that it's 27% and show you guys the input, output, and also the hour that's on here. And top of right here, they do have the brand name. On the side right here, they do have the ventilation option to prevent it from overheating when you do use it. Same name for this side as well. And then right here is the top part. Notice how the top part right here or the back part, they do have a handle for you guys to carry around really easily, which is really nice compared to the previous versions. Bottom part right here, they do have like the non-slip material on here to prevent it from moving around when you guys do use it. And the back part right here is where you guys want plugging cable to be charging. So this one is for the AC option, which is the wall charging option. And this one right here is the car charging option, or you can also use a solar panel to recharge as well. And when you guys do feel the overall weight of the product, it definitely has a little bit of weight to it, but not like too heavy that you guys can't carry around. But that is pretty much everything that's on the product. One right now is to plug it in to show you guys how fast it charges when you guys do use that. And then we'll give it a try for the output option on here. All right, so let's do plugging cable in the back part right here first. Once you guys plug it in, if you guys do look at fan part right here, it will show you guys that it's charging. So give it a few seconds to kind of load up because the cable wasn't plugged in all the way. So right now, you can see how the watt is going up. Right now, it's at 622 watts. And they mentioned how it'll probably take around 43 minutes to fully charge it up from 25% to 100. You can see right there. And the cool thing about the fact that how it is an EcoFlow product, it allows you guys to connect it on the app, just like the other devices. So if you guys don't have the app already, you do want to download it. Let me open it first. The moment once you guys open it, you can see how I found the device. So I was going to add it. And I'll tell you guys to connect it on the Wi-Fi. So I'm actually connect onto the Wi-Fi first. Once you guys do connect it, you can see right now it's connected on the Wi-Fi. So I might take a few seconds to load up. All right. So we got it all set up. And it give you guys an option to change the different display for what you guys want to see. I'll use the one that's recommended for me. And I'll rename the device so that way we know which one is which. This one is the EcoFlow River 2 Pro or 2 Max, sorry. So once you guys got it all set up, this is what the app looks like. So they do show you the input, output, and the percentage on here and the remaining time that it'll take to recharge right there. And in the bottom part right here, you do have the option to turn on and turn off the AC option if you guys want to, which is really convenient. If you guys do press on top right corner here, that will allow you guys to go to the setting page here to change the different setting for different stuff on here for the power station. So feel free to change the AC charging speed. If you guys want to change like the car output, car input, DC option, turn on and turn off the X boost technology on here and so much more. And if you're first time in the product, you do want to update the firmware on here. Right now, we do have to update it. So I'm going to update it right now. So that way, it does have the latest firmware on here for the product. That way, it works very smoothly when we do use that. So I'm going to let it finish update first, and we'll come back and check on it and give it a try with the other output option on here in terms of how well it does work. All right, so we finished the update on here. And if it's in here for the product when we're charging up, it kicks in the fan on here to help you guys prevent it from overheating when you guys do use that. 
but that thing charges really fast. You can see how it's at 31% already. It went from 24 to 31% in a few minutes. So what I'm gonna do right now is unplug the cable and we'll give it a try to use a few things on here to see how it does work when you guys do use that. So I'm gonna unplug it from the back and just put the cable to one side for now. I think what I'm gonna test out first is using a USB-C option on here to see how much power it does provide when we do connect it onto our laptop. And the laptop that I do have right here is my MacBook Pro 16 inch. So I'm gonna plug it into the USB-C option here. That's the only one available. Let me try to use a different cable because this one doesn't work. All right, so I do plug in again using a different cable. It still doesn't work. So probably because we didn't turn on the AC option. All right, so it looks like it didn't finish doing the update on here. So I had to do one more update. That's why it didn't work. So I do replug it in again. The other side's plugged in my laptop, like I mentioned. Once you guys plug it in, you can see how right here it does show you guys USB-C and it show you guys the power that's being provided when you guys do use it. So currently it's providing around 92 watts. It's so very close to 100 watts that they mentioned on here, but not quite there, you can see. And they mentioned how there's probably one hour battery life on here when you guys use that. And notice how when you guys do plug it in and use it, it does activate the fan option on here. And even when you guys do look at the app right here, it shows you guys how much output that's being provided when you guys do use that. So the product definitely does work. If you guys were to plug in another device at the same time, let's see what happens. So for this test, what I'm going to use is a wall charger to plug in. And I do have this anchor wall charger right here that's 140 watts. And the reason why I'm using this option is because for the bottom part right here, it only gives you guys one of the USB-C option and not more than one. So that's why I'm forced to use this to charge another device at the same time because the other ones is all USB-A. So I turn on the AC option and what I want to do is plug this side onto my other device here. This is a brand new product from the Anchor brand. That's a power bank that probably got up to 140 watts of power for the input and output when you guys do use that. And that's only for the single output. If you guys do use more than one, it will give you guys up to 250 watts, which is more than enough power for you guys to recharge like a laptop if you guys want to. And this one also give you guys like the wire charging base to recharge it if you guys want to as well, which is really cool. So if you guys are interested in this product, feel free to go check it out. The reason why I got the device here is because I do want to show you guys how much power it does provide when you guys do plug it in here because it's supposed to go up to 140 watts. So I do plug it in. It does show you guys like the battery percentage, how long it takes to recharge it and how much power that's being generated on here. So let's wait a few seconds, the number should go up a lot more. So right now I mentioned 133 and 139 watts when you guys do use that. So a lot of power you can see, even more than what you guys get for the built-in USB-C option on here. And when you guys do look at how much power that's being generated on here, it mentions 234 watts for the USB-C option and also the AC option when you guys do use that. Show you guys all the data on here. And when you guys do look at the screen on here, it will show you the same stuff. You can see right there. So right now it's going up to 234 watts. One right now is to plug in one more device in terms of the AC option to show you guys how well it does work if you guys were to use something a little bit more powerful. So obviously if you guys were to use like an electric kettle or something, it will not work. So you probably want to use something a little bit more weaker. So what I'm gonna use for the other test right here is this uh, live fan hair dryer that's very similar to like the Dyson hair dryer. So what I'm gonna do is insert it into either one of the output in the AC option. So just like that. And once you guys do plug it in, if you guys do turn it on, let's see how it does work. Because I can't hold the pot at the same time, I'll show you guys on here. So I do turn it on. You can see how it does turn off. And because the AC option on here went too high and it shuts down the AC option completely. So it does have the overload protection on here when you guys do use that. And just to show you guys what it looks like on the screen, let me try one more time. So let's turn it back on. You guys can see how it starts working again. And it shuts off because of that overload protection on here. But see how it goes as high as 736 watts on here and it just shuts off because the heat on here might be a little bit too hot. Let me try again, but this time let me change the different heat option on the actual hair dryer and see what happens. All right, so we got it back on and it starts charging again. Let me try to change the speed on here or the different heat option. I need to do it one more time because the heat option went to the high setting, but I want to change it to low or the uh, cool option. So when you guys use a cool option on here, it does work. So right now it's around 358 watts when you guys do use that. But when you guys use the heating option on here, it will not work because it won't support the heat that comes out. Let me try to unplug this cable and see what happens when you guys use only the heating option 
or the hair drying option with the USB-C. See if that supports it when you guys use it. So I'll turn it back on. And we'll turn it on the low heat. So, so far so good. It's providing 716 watts when you guys use them. So if you guys use it on low heat and low speed, it does work. But once I increase the speed, Does shut off. So because of the safety feature built onto the product in terms of the overheat or overload protection on here, it will turn off once it reaches above a certain limit. So in terms of the X boost technology on here, what they mean is that it supports the device can go above 1000 watts. But I guess the limit on here is around like 700 or 800 watts when you guys use the devices. So keep that in mind. So very cool how this power station gives you guys an option to use the X boost technology on here to use a little bit more powerful devices like your hair dryer. But like I mentioned, if you guys were to use it for like even more powerful stuff like electric kettle, it will not support it because there's a little bit too much uh, power on there. So if you guys use it for like small stuff like your power bank or like your MacBook Pro, MacBook Air to recharge it, it will work. So just to be sure, let me actually do one more test with the power station to show you guys when it actually works if you guys were to use it on something else that's a little bit more powerful. And it will come back and talk more product in a second. All right, so right here I do have the product. Currently I do have it plugged into my kettle. I do want to give it a try and see when it actually works when we do use it. So once you guys do turn it on, if you guys do look over here, you guys can see how it does probably got 618 watts. So I guess for the product, it does work when you guys do use it, but doesn't probably got a lot of power on here when you guys use it. Because usually for the electric kettle on here, it's supposed to use around like 1300 or 1400 watts of power when you guys do use it. So it definitely does work, but it's very slow when you guys do use it and see. It's so very cool how the product does work, but not as fast as what you guys want it to be. But now you can see how it does have overload protection on here. So I guess it does work for a short while and then it does turn off because of that overload protection on here. You can see. So it doesn't really work when you guys use it, but it works for a short while. I'll come back guys. So I'm see how when you guys use the pilot, it doesn't support the power on there when you guys use it for more uh, powerful stuff like electric kettle or whatever. So keep that in mind when you guys use it, there is a limit of up to 1000 watts when you guys use it. Anything above that will not support it for this device in particular. If you guys want something that will support like electric kettle or whatever, you probably want to go for the Delta 2, Delta 2 Max, or even Delta 2 Pro. But that is how you guys do use it for this one. And if you guys do have the option to use it while you guys are charging the input option on here for the power station at the same time to use the output if you guys want to as well. So that is pretty much everything that's on the product. Now that we show you guys how the product works and what you guys do get, now to answer the question of whether or not it's worth or not. So for this power station, I do have to say that it's pretty worth it if you guys want to need one of these, especially if you guys are in the market looking for a high quality power station that give you guys enough power to recharge like your small devices, like your laptop, or use like a blow dryer in a low setting or anything else similar to that, like a power bank or power station or something. Especially if you guys are planning to use it as an emergency option at home or when you guys are camping, then I do have to say that it's pretty worth it. But then obviously for those of you guys who don't want or don't need one or have one of these, that obviously don't buy one and save your money something else that actually do need. So that's basically everything for this video itself. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button in the bottom. That will definitely help this video out. And it will definitely help with the algorithm as well to promote more videos for you guys so you guys can see more of the videos or similar videos as well. But as always, make sure to stay positive, be you, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Is It Worth It? Peace.